Hello again and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've been quite busy since the last episode. One of the big things I've done, as you can see here, is I've built up production of um, Blue Science. Uh, however, I um, apparently can't count. I didn't notice when I was doing it that the recipe requires two engine units per build rather than one. Um, so whilst I've got the 24 machines making the science packs that I needed, I've only got 10 machines making engines, so there aren't enough engines coming through. There's about there's about half as many as I need. Um, is that correct? Yeah. So yeah, there is exactly half as many as I need. It's all so it, the ratio is spot on if there were twice as many engines. So I'm going to need to put some more in, um, engine production, and obviously I'm just trying to think about what the best way to do that would be. Uh, it would obviously be trivial to just push this all further out except that I've got this iron belt here coming in and then only getting as far as here because after this point after these motors it's no longer the iron is no longer needed so um yeah that um I'll have to have a bit of a think about that. Maybe I'll get the iron to bypass it and, and put them in over here anyway. Or maybe I'll just put them in up here, but I'll need to remove this this wall and these turrets if I do. That said, I'm probably going to need to do that anyway, because the, the bus has now reached this wall, so I'm going to need to carry on expanding upwards here. Now, as I said in the last episode, I'm concentrating a lot more on having um, a more modular base with these sort of self-contained outputs that are linked up by the railway lines. So. This is the perfect example. We've got the um, railway lines coming in here, except for that little bit that I seem to have not built properly for some reason. That's a bit of a pain. Uh, so those are coming in here. And then we've got a station dropping off coal and ammunition here, and that keeps the um, these belts, the defensive, the defences um, armed and fully operational. And then a massive station here that's collecting up the iron ore, which is what this facility is all about. I've had to build up a, a fair number of um, steam engines here to get the amount of power required by all those miners and as you can see it's running at about 90% capacity which is a shame because I'm planning to put about twice as many miners in as this as, uh, to cover the entire patch so that's going to be quite a big job um, or it's going to need a lot more miners and another sort of power station about the same size as this one so I'm going to I don't know where I'm going to squeeze that in perhaps down here We'll see. We'll see as we get there. Um, but that's working quite well. I did have to clear out quite a lot of biters to get this set up. There was um, a small nest of them round about here, I think, just on the corner, or maybe it's just round the corner here. And then there was a much bigger one about here. So I, I got managed to get rid of those by um, essentially through turret creep. What are those turrets doing there? Maybe I left them there after completing the biters. Um, yeah, so I built a row of four turrets, um, armed them out of my pockets, and then built another row uh, slightly further forward. Now, I ran into the um, problem with that, that the um, the medium spitters, uh, sorry, medium worms, and possibly even the small worms as well, um, outrange the turrets by a reasonable amount. However, fortunately, I discovered that the uh, the rocket launcher has a longer range, and about one and one rocket will take out a small worm, three rockets will take out a medium worm, so it was relatively easy to stand off just outside their range, or just on the edge of their range and dance around a bit, and hit them with rockets until they until they stopped spitting <laughs> and from then on it was just a case of march the turrets in to deal with the biters and the and the spawners so yeah that was that went that uh, went quite well i've got a bit of a problem up here as you can see this area has gone dark and that's because the um, the amount of oil being produced here isn't sufficient for the number of um uh, refineries and then machines processing that so so in here these machines <laughs> the one these this this blurry smudge here is oh there we go the um the solar panels kicked in so this 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 these ones here are producing plastic these ones are producing sulfur unfortunately the um the rate that oil is coming out from these um pumps isn't sufficient to keep the uh, the refineries running and keep this full and therefore keep this producing solid fuel so yeah <laughs> that's a bit of a problem I'm going to need to um, so what I'm planning to do for that is there's another patch of um, of, of oil down here so I'm, I've been building up a wall around this and then I ran out of supplies and had to come back to base to get some more so obviously I'm going to fill this wall up back round to the across to here and here's some more biters I took out um, and and put put in the defenses as normal and then I'll have a spur off this railway line here that's going to um, allow it that's going to allow for a um, an oil uh, a fluid train that will pick up the oil from this um, from this patch and take it back to the base. Uh, I'm not sure whether I've left enough room to have a train quite as long as this, unfortunately. 
some jiggery and pokery may be required, like putting this loop a bit further down. But I'll um, I'll burn that bridge when I come to it, as the uh, as the saying doesn't quite go. But you know, it's close enough. Right. So having that, um, having the the plastic and sulphur being made up here has worked quite nicely. Um, I've got enough of it to get started at least. So as you can see, I've got um, a supply of plastic in this station, a supply of sulphur in this one. What's being attacked? Okay, I'm going to need to put in some more defences, uh, but not now. I've got the plastic and the sulphur coming through here, down the belt, da 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 da. Um, because now, so, so there's various things needed here. The first thing I did, I, I reckon there's going to be quite a few different things that are going to require explosives. So I've put in some machines here that are building up the explosives. I quite like the plumes of appropriately coloured smoke and the fluid sloshing around inside the um, the chemical plants that, that you get. But, um, I think this must be part of a new graphics update because I, I don't remember seeing that before. But different things have different plumes coming out of the top of them. So anything involving oil has a rather fetching purple one. This one is sulphur so it's got a nice yellow one and so on. But um, I digress a little bit. So I've got explosives being made here because I reckon I'm going to need those for various different things. Top of the list, though, was moving the um, cliff explosives down here. Because as you remember from the last episode, I was making these up in the oil processing area. But there's no iron. Oh, there is coal. But there's no iron and there's no steel in that area. So it can't make... It, I was having to transport that up by hand. Now this is being built down here. I've got everything I need on the bus. And it's churning out cliff explosives at a happy rate of... Well, not, a very, not very fast, but faster than I'm using them. So that's absolutely fine. The next step was the uh, the blue science, as I was touching on earlier. So I had, I had a look through the ratios, and, well, ignoring the fact that I got the numbers wrong, um, and that there's not enough steel coming through, that's a bit of a problem as well. Um, I was looking at this, so there's, there's two of these being produced um, every time it runs, and it runs once every 24 seconds. Now green is the same, it produces two every time it runs, but that runs every 10 seconds. And so, in order to get an appropriate amount of green science, where am I making green science? Here. I've got 10, um, 10 of these machines um, making the green science, so that's making two per second. Uh, well, two per second uh, times the crafting speed of the machine, which as you can see here is, is 0 0.5. So actually it's only making one per second, but that, that was... That was the the aim was to have it one per machine second. That way when I go through and upgrade all of the machines, they'll all stay in sync. And over here with the red ones, red takes, uh, it produces one every five machine seconds. So I should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I should have ten of those, I think, to produce two every machine second. Uh, so that's a bit under, under spec, but I'm not actually doing any research at the moment, and there's less blue, so it doesn't matter for now, but I should probably come along and just do, well, this. And build that up over there, because I haven't got bots yet. <laughs> that's going to be something I should look into, actually. Okay, so over here, that's why I've got 24 of these machines. It's getting, it takes longer and longer to produce subsequent um, tiers of, of science packs, which is why the uh, the banks of machines are getting bigger and bigger. And with this road here, I've been putting in roads as well. I'll talk about that in a, min in a minute. But with that road there, I didn't really want to build across the road, so I thought rather than having strings, two strings of 12, I'd have three strings of eight. That does make the the belts a little bit more complicated, but only only very slightly so. Um, it just means I need these, these two splitters here and, and a few extra belts, but I think that's absolutely fine. Then up here, now the main things the main things for this that we need for the blue science are the red circuits, which are being made. They're being made en masse down here, so I don't need to worry about the ratios up here. I just pull them off the belt, and if there aren't enough on the belt, then I need to make up more here. Uh, that's relatively straightforward, and it looks like, well, I don't know, it's... There's a lot of space on the belt, so I could be making a lot more, but only about half of the machines are running, so it, I say about half, about three quarters of them are running. So we do have more being made than we're using, but there's a lot of space on the belt, and I could probably bump that up a little bit, and maybe I should do that. Uh, the sulphur obviously comes from the um, oil processing facility, and as long as the trains are bringing that in, there'll always be loads of that, so again, I can just pull it off the belt without worrying about ratios. The engines I'm not making on the bus, because there's only a handful of things that use them. I think there's trains, which you don't make in enormous quantities, cars, which you make in even, even smaller quantities, and Blue Science is the big user of the um, of engines. So I'm building them on site here. 
and I did I did the maths for this. So for these ten machines, I needed two machines making. Well, it was I think looking looking at how this is ground to a halt. I think it was one and a bit of these. Because let's have a look. So we we'd say um, uh, ten seconds, but there's ten of them. So every second, so we need a motor every second, and it takes just over a second to make a motor. So in order to keep that up to speed we need to have two of two machines one of which is not going to be doing anything most of the time we also need cogs for these so we need one we need two cogs a second for the two motors no one cog a second for the motor and two cogs a second for the engine so we need three cogs per second cogs take half a second to make so that's, that's only two machines making cogs but for the sake of simplicity i thought i'd just feed straight into these um into the into the motor building ones with these two and then fill up the bus belt with the other one. And pipes are similar. I think you need two. Yes, you need two pipes, but it only takes half a second to make a pipe. So two pipes a second is enough to balance this. So one pipe making machine is is spot on. Is exactly what I need. I was a little bit concerned that I was going to have issues with the long handled inserters not being fast enough because, as you can see, if you watch them, the red inserters are quite a bit slower than the blue ones. Uh, there, I think I think the red ones run at the same speed as yellow inserters, whereas the blue ones run several times, uh, twice as fast. Uh, let's see, actually. Rotation speed 300 degrees, 400. No. Okay, the long ones are a bit faster than the yellow ones, but then the fast inserters are twice as fast as the red ones. But I've done enough of the um, stack size boosting that I think some of it has moved over onto the to affecting the non-stack inserters, so each of these can grab two items at a time. So it is able to keep up. The thing that isn't able to keep up is steel production. Now, a lot of that is probably going into ammunition because whenever I build one of my outposts like this one, there's a massive dump of red ammunition going into it. As you can see, these these chests up here are gradually filling up and trying to fill the train back up again. So there's a big pull on the uh, on the steel, but even so, that's still a bit slow. Steel is coming through very slowly. I think yes, this is why we don't have enough iron ore coming in. And that is why I'm building this, this facility out here. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is building a, um, a six carriage, two engine train, two locomotive train to pull from here and bring all those supplies down, down here somewhere. Um, I'm going to want to have some unloading stations in this area, which I think means I'm going to need to move this power plant. Probably, I don't want to put it in down here because that's where the um, smelting is being done. I could put it in down here, perhaps. Yeah, there's a nice big space down here. I'll probably, Yeah, let's put power in in this area, and then I can ha keep smelting here and potentially expand it downwards with judicious use of, um, of landfill. And I do have quite a lot of landfill available now. I've got a thousand of it because I've got it built, being built up here from this, from this stone mine, uh, which has actually got through quite a lot of its miners already. I should go and t move some of those around and redistribute them. Um, not that it's a problem at the moment because everything's ground a bit to a halt because of the lack of steel um, and copper as well actually for that matter why is copper slow I guess it's just I'm starting to I'm not starting to run out from this patch but all the miners are starting to run out okay that's another thing to look at and maybe just find to be honest just find another copper patch um, and because I'm going to eventually I'm going to need another unloading station in here for iron copper and probably coal Although with this belt, I could put in a coal one up here somewhere and perhaps belt it down. I'll see. I'll see how much room there is. Um, yeah, so I'm going to need more copper. There's a tiny patch. There's a, a decent patch over here, and maybe I'll go out and claim that one. But I sort of, I sort of want to continue expanding eastwards because the way the Factorio um, ore patch generation works, the further you are from your um, starting point, the bigger, the, the richer the patches get. So. He says finding an 800,000 one over here. Okay, maybe I'll go for this 3 million one over here, because, or almost 4 million one over here, because it's a bit of an anomaly, but it's a good size. But generally, I want to try and expand out to the east. Um, yeah, so that's my, my, my current issue is that I don't have enough iron ore coming in, and this patch up here, here I could put more miners on it, That'll be a temporary solution. I might, I might do that and just to bump it up a little bit, get a little bit more flowing through for the time being, whilst I get the trains running. And then I shall try and get this copper patch over here. There aren't a huge number of biters, so I, can, I should be able to get that. Okay, that's not too bad. 
Uh, one of the other things I've been doing, as you can see here, I've, I'm starting to put in a bit of a backbone of, um, of railway line across here. So it's starting to build up a proper long-term railway system for my uh, for my factory that doesn't just have little bits of, of, of rail winding through wherever they wherever I can squeeze them in, but actually has a proper two-way system like this with a decent amount of space between them, just running back and forth. And this can be extended as far as necessary. There's room for as many trains as I want on it. It's got you can, the, the blue dots you can see here are the signals, making sure everything carries on working there. Um, the only thing, well, actually, it's a slight, it's a bit of a shame it's going to run straight through the top of this iron, uh, this coal, coal mine here, but that's not really a problem. With the landfill I've got, I can punch through this lake and just, yeah, just keep going over this way and then have a spur going down to this copper patch. So that's going to work out quite nicely, I think. I've also built a little bit of road around inside my base. Uh, it makes it a bit easier to get round when you know that you can just point the car down a road and put your foot down and there's nothing to hit. Uh, it just makes things a little bit easier. It's not perfect because there are a few things like I can't I can't extend it over this way because I put it, put these this smelting area in before I designed it before I decided to put it there. But it's basically okay. Okay, I think that's a pretty good pretty much covers what I've been up to. Um, with the ra with the rails in here, I'm going to I'm going to use this as my main expansion route. So I'm going to build it out to the to the east uh, when I need more more um, resources and also to the west to get this copper patch as I, as I was saying. Um, there's some stone in there as well. There's probably going to be some coal somewhere around. I can, I can find that if I need it. Um, in general, yeah, I think I'm in, I think I'm in quite a good position now. The research is 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 going slowly although that said I've got quite a decent backup of blue now because I've not been doing any research for a little while so research is working I've got most of the sort of the major difficult thing I've got most of the major things I need at this stage of the game being built automatically now so so expanding out isn't too difficult I just need to make sure I've got the right stuff um, <laughs> and and also come in and massively boost everything on the inputs because everything's running out okay so my jobs for the next episode Boost the inputs. That's a big one. Um, I need more iron. I need more copper. Uh, coal is okay at the moment, I believe. Yeah, coal is okay. Stone is absolutely fine. But I need more iron. I need more copper. And I need more steel, but that comes from the iron. I need to get more oil as well. Um, and I need to boost the amount of blue circuits I'm making by increasing the engine production here. So, those are my plans for the next um, next couple of episodes. Uh you can come back in the next one and uh, see how much of it I've done, and I hope you will. Uh, keep me honest and all that sort of thing. So, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, and we'll uh, carry on building up the inputs. <laughs> oh dear, I'm getting attacked. What's getting blown? Oh dear, it's over here. Right, I'm going to need to go and fix that. Thanks for watching. I'll go and do that first, and <laughs> see you next time.